we're going to do an advent calendar today. Um, but first, <clears throat> dude, I was just thinking about this. Um, I'm so I'm so messy that I didn't know I got robbed. This happened a couple months ago. And I was thinking this when I was walking up because I was like, you know, Bose, when are you going to run out of stories to tell? The truth is there's a demon sent by God that gives me something horrible to tell you about. And sometimes good. Sometimes there's good. Like we're going to open up an advent calendar today. That's good. That's happy. That's exciting. That's be like, I'm going to blow through this thing. Like I'm not going to be like, hee <laughs> one, one podcast per box or anything. Um, but the demon... It it makes sure that I don't run out of stories. Um, I was I left my house. I was in a rush to get somewhere, <laughs> and I I you know I I have a nice car. It, that's important because like it's it just generally looks like nice and it's new in there, right? This is new for me because my parents they always told me you don't borrow money you don't have. So I didn't have a credit card until I was like 25. I didn't finance a car. I paid for every car that I ever had in cash. So when I leased this car, the Porsche, I'm not going to lie to you, okay? I'm not going to lie to you because like, I don't, I don't, it's a Porsche. So I get in, I get in the, 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 the new shiny car and I look in and I'm like, yo, I didn't know I just, threw my stuff around like this anyways and I just I just got it <laughs> I started the car and I started like looking around and like my middle console was just like open and just kind of hanging out and then I looked over and I I saw my um I saw my registration expired in like a month or something and I was like oh, okay and then I was like wait a minute why is my registration just out on the seat <laughs> And it's because I didn't I don't I didn't have anything in the car because a couple years ago, my favorite car, I had I had this Mitsubishi 3000 GT, which is like a car that was like hot in the 90s in the movies. OK, and the door got ripped off of it like a fucking can opener. And I bought that car for seventeen hundred dollars. And I was like, dude, I'll figure it out. We'll get it fixed. We did get it fixed. I loved that car. It was a little red. 3000 GT. The the door was a slightly different shade of red from like sun damage or something, but I loved that car, okay? One time, I was parked outside of a TGI Fridays and I left a couple quarters in the middle console. And then I got drunk, did not drive home, left my car in the parking lot, and I came back the next day and somebody had busted my fucking window out. So anyways, I don't leave stuff in my car, normally. <sighs> so back to the Porsche. So I'm in the car and um, I'm driving and I'm like, why is my registration out? And I start to look around and I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> like I've been robbed. <laughs> so, <laughs> I they, they had opened up, that's what they do. They open up the, what is it? The dashboard with all your stuff in there. They just opened it up and started throwing the stuff everywhere. And I'm so messy. I just thought that was me because that's something I would do. I didn't remember doing that, but I don't remember anything that I do, you know? So I was at a loss. I was, this is, there's like this thing that happens to me that I just want everybody in the world to be good. And when somebody robs me, I'm like, how could you do something so wrong, illegal, harm another human being? It like shakes my whole world view because I was raised really religious. We'll get back to this Christmas time. I was raised really religious. So they told me that like everybody was going to be good. I don't know. I'm not going to get into that right now. I'm a little fucked up. I like to believe that everybody's good. So anyways, I realized I got robbed. And this like shakes my whole world view. And I'm like, you know, I finally parked the car. I look in the trunk. They wiped me clean. I, normally, I don't have anything in the car, but I had a photo shoot a few weeks before. Yes, it did take me eight weeks to clear out the trunk of the photo shoot. So I told you, I, I'm messy and I'm lazy. So if it's going to be more than three trips, I'll do it next year. 
I went into the remnants of my trunk and it was like just little things we bought off of Amazon for the photo shoot. And I was like, okay, I don't think they got anything. And then I realized they stole my vintage typo negative shirt that cost me like $200. It was like an original 90s vintage typo negative shirt. And I was so upset. So anyways, my boyfriend found another one at the store for like like way cheaper. It's still like a vintage one. This is like an old school one. Um, and he said it was like 80 bucks. So he got it for me and gave it to me as an early Christmas present. Anyways, so I got my shirt back. But I was really upset about that. And I don't know why they robbed me. I don't know why they did that. They didn't have to do that. I want to get to the box. But... Um, hmm. let's get to the box, you know? So this Williams Sonoma, it's a Williams Sonoma. I love Williams Sonoma. It's like a nice cooking place. I like to cook. I don't like to clean, but I like to cook. I like to make a mess and eat it and I don't want to clean it up, but I like Williams Sonoma. The, I got this box to open it with you guys. I would never buy this on my own, okay? It was $299 on sale. Look at that. Look at that. This is just delightful, isn't it? So we're already, right now that I'm filming this, it's December 12th. I don't even know if I should tell you that because that's the magic of production, content release, right? You feel duped if this gets released way after that, right? I don't know. It's December 12th. I want you to know. You know, I feel like I'm entering an age of transparency. I'm going to tell you it's December 12th, and I'm going to tell you that I have a Porsche. I'm not going to lie to you. I don't have time for that. I'm very tired. Okay, so Williams Sonoma Advent Luxury. That's what it's called, the Advent Luxury Calendar. Um, I didn't have any coffee today, so believe it or not, we're slowing down. It may not feel like it, but we are. What the fuck is this? Where's the calendar? I see a smaller one that's $199. Okay, this is the big one. Is this the big one? Okay. All right, I got it right here. So it's actually on sale now for $199, I guess, because we're already halfway through the holidays and they know nobody's going to buy one. How much did I pay for this? I don't, I need to know. Okay, I've got the receipt. Okay, we paid $199. We paid $199, but it retails for $300. So, <clears throat> they, they have like, I don't know, cooking stuff. I just figured this would be, I figured there'd be something good in here, right? So, let's go through. And, and at $300... See, there's 25, $300. That's the retail price. That's what we're going off of. 25, 12, 12 dollars per box. Yeah, I guess so. Each box should be worth about 12 dollars. They can skimp out a little bit on a box and give me something good for Christmas, right? Okay, but overall, 300 dollars. Let's see if this is worth it. Does it bring you joy day to day? Ooh, I'm excited. I don't know what's in here. Box number one. Handcrafted toffee bites. Traditional style toffee enrobed in milk chocolate and almonds. Oh, hmm, to you. Um, I don't like toffee. That's not doing that much for me. Okay, box number two. What's this? It's a little... It doesn't even ding. Maybe it's an ornament. I think it's some type of ornament. Okay, looks like a little... It's not even a pan. I don't know what this is. Some kind of baking dish as an ornament. Okay. 
Wait, I just realized some of you clean people, you're gonna lose your minds if I just open all of these and leave it on the table like this, aren't you? Because I, it, it could be as simple as me putting it back inside, but that's just not within my nature. Okay, even though I just said that I'm gonna be true to myself, I'm not gonna lie to you about like who I am or what I do, sometimes, sometimes we sacrifice our authenticity for others in the moment, not forever, but in this moment, I can do that for you. Toffee bites. Okay, so far, uh, let me not judge. Let's not judge too hard. Number three. Ooh, okay, this looks good. Is it all gonna be candy? I thought I would get like a little, I don't know, something like day-to-day -day use. Okay, almonds, hazelnuts, dark milk, chocolate, cinnamon tangerine. I don't want that, cinnamon tangerine. Almonds and hazelnuts, yeah, is it all combined? What is it? Uh, Almonds and hazelnuts, dark, and milk chocolate, cinnamon tangerine. I I don't want the cinnamon tangerine, but I like the first couple of things. That's good. I, do we have to move faster? Maybe, I don't know. Okay, number four. Giuseppe gourmet dressing. That isn't, hold on. <laughs> the ingredients of this are wine vinegar, and cooked grape must. That's it? Y'all just put two ingredients in here? This is so cheap, y'all couldn't even put some, like, substances, you know the weird stuff on the back of the ingredients label that you don't know what it is, but they do it because it makes it even cheaper? This is so cheap, it's just two ingredients. Like, I understand organic, but this one feels lazy. Wine vinegar and cooked grape must. Okay. I don't know, maybe it's European. <sighs> okay, number five. This is a big one. This is a big one. Finally, finally, we get something good, maybe. I, okay, I feel excited about this one. Ah, I love Williams and Sonoma, I do, I really do. And I, I, my, I'll open this first. I want to be optimistic, but I'm telling you, the first couple of products were just not it. You would think that they would want to start with a bang. Is this an ornament? A dinner bell ornament? Let's see if it sounds nice. Hello? Dude, I gotta choke the sound out of her. Um, I I like it. I need to like something. I need to like. I need to find something to like. Otherwise, I'll be miserable. Right? I think that goes for life. You need to find something to like. Otherwise, you'll be miserable. I'm not trying to give you life advice. I'm just trying to get through this box. Okay. What the hell is this? Madagascar bourbon pure vanilla extract. Next. I tried to make one of those simmer pots last year for Christmas and I almost burned the house down because I fell asleep while it was simmering. Apricot reserves. Preserves, whatever. Is it, maybe, maybe at the end of the week, every week they blow us away. Or maybe the Christmas one is just gonna go crazy. Is this a mistake? What is this? It's just two, it's just two little sponges. Not even sponges, it's like packed together paper. Is this part of the packaging? Did they mean to put this in here? Uh, 
for you. Oh, God, it's the sponges again. Okay, number nine. Oh, wait, there's little cards in here. It's another ornament! Okay, this one's kind of cute. I do think this one's kind of cute. I would put this one on the tree. If you guys like cooking, you would probably put this up. It's a... It's a nice quality, just kind of like French style pant. I don't know. Like, I think this is cute. I could be into this. Maybe, perhaps. This is not good. Number 10. Last time we got something good with five. Let's see what happens. Oh. Mustard. And more mustard. Okay, to be fair, it does look like some good ass mustard. I, I I do I do like mustard. I do like mustard. I made a lemon vinaigrette last night, which you need a little Dijon mustard to make. I'll try this mustard. I'm keeping these out as the gifts I do like. Um, but I mean, hey, that's up to you. I don't know if you like mustard. Keep doing that for you. Okay. God. <laughs> this might be the worst advent calendar I've ever opened. I don't know what I was expecting, but it's not this. This is a mint tin of sea salt. Our pure kosher sea salt is hand harvested by the cold from the cold pristine waters of the bay on the Oregon coast. It's salt from Oregon. In a mint tin? If I met somebody that had salt in a little tin that they carried in their purse, I would think that they're crazy. Because I have met somebody that carried salt in a little like cocaine vial and she was crazy more marmalade dude i don't even want to open that come on guys give me something good do you guys think that there's going to be at least one good thing and these are things that i'm forcing myself to like the bell and the mustard oh it's another ornament it's a fish I have to, sh by law, I have to show you, so you, you know. Oh my God. I, dude, can you imagine paying $300 for this and like giving it to somebody as a gift that like loves William Sonoma and they're just getting fucked in the butt every day? Peppermint bark bites. Dude, I, I'm holding out for Christmas. Okay, this is heavy. Number 15. Tapenade, it's olives, olives, olive oil, roasted red peppers, capers, lemon juice, garlic, herbs. I'm going to leave it out because I'm going to try it. I'm going to try it when I get home. I'm struggling over here. But that's, that's really only three things that I like out of 15 days so far. Is this a bad advent calendar? Christmas gummies. <sighs> We're almost done. I'm not, listen, I'm not just going up to the date of what today is. I'm blowing through this whole thing. <laughs> oh my God. More marmalade, but this time they saved the strawberry for the 17th because they know we love strawberry. I, dude, I don't know about you guys, but I really like, I, I'll always pick strawberry first. I don't know, everyone knows what fruit they pick first. Mine is strawberry. More peppermint bark. This is so bad. This is actually, this is a scam. This, <laughs> I, I feel scammed and I was just opening this for a podcast. I'll essentially make my money back, you know? Don't buy this. Okay, all right, this one's heavy. A 
It's more mustard. It's a bigger jar of mustard. <laughs> it's a bigger jar of French mustard. Is it all mustard French? Frenches? I'm gonna try it. I don't. Dude, here's the thing. You know none of this stuff is going to taste that good. I ain't going to sit here and do a whole taste test. If I, if I taste it, I'll put it on my Instagram story or something. Ugh. 20th. They, they are getting bigger. Hmm. Herbs of Provence. Okay. It's a little, this is like a, like an herb that you would like commonly put on chicken, poultry, something like that. Um, I, all right. I like this one. I like it. Listen, we're critical here, but we're not, we give it a chance, right? Okay, the last five. Is it five? Yep, 21 through 25. They're getting heavier. But if I see one more peppermint bark in here, I'm gonna lose my mind. These are dog gummies. Dude, these guys really just said fuck Mondays, huh? Actually, I don't know what day of the week this is. Oh, God. Twenty-two. It's olive oil. <laughs> I don't know what I don't know what I was expecting. What were you expecting? I don't know. I just wasn't. This isn't. It's not. I wanted stuff like this giant mustard back to a fucking back. That's what I wanted. I wanted bangers, full-size banger. At $300, I want a full-size because I told y'all so these boxes should be worth at least about $12 or sometimes they can skimp down a little bit. This mustard is worth like $7. So what are we doing? This olive oil? What is this, this mini olive oil? I don't care how high quality this is. I don't care if you like sucked this straight out of the ground in Italy. This is like $4, sorry, $4. Okay. Raspberry dressing. I, come on, guys. It's the 23rd. Like, I, you should really be beefing me up. No way! You have to be kidding me! Not the peppermint bark for Christmas Eve. The peppermint bark for... Dude, this thing is ass! This is ass! Don't... Bro, if you're not trying to make people happy, don't make an advent calendar. Do not make an advent calendar. I... And for Christmas. It's an unlabeled candle. Do you think this was $12? This is my Christmas present, William Sonoma? This is it. This is the big one. This is, a, bro, this is unbelievable to me. And I don't even, I don't even like Christmas like that. <sighs> For $300, the only things that I'm happy, I'm not even going to say I'm happy with the, the tapenade or whatever because this is like, I was like, I'll try it. Fuck the mustard. I do like the herbs. Yeah, this is trash. Don't buy this. Do not do this. Do not give this to your family. Do not abuse your wallet by purchasing this. Get, I'm going to get rid of this. <sighs> I don't know when this is going up, but now it has to go up sometime around or before Christmas, which would mess up my posting schedule. Regardless, I don't have one. I've never been somebody that's good at branding and all that stuff. I just exist. I don't, okay, I don't really like Christmas. I feel like a lot of people get that. Some people love it. They absolutely love it. As I'm getting older, I'm getting better about it, okay? I have, like, some, like, weird stuff with, like, religion. Like, I don't really... 
it's complicated, right? Because like on one hand, it's like she's obviously confused because I have a lot of I have like a lot of religious tattoos. Like I have like Exodus tattooed on me and like angels and just a bunch of just a bunch of weird stuff like that. And I was saying about this, dude. Oh, I was saying about this the other day. I was like, dude. I want to get more tattoos. And the first thing I defaulted to was like more religious tattoos. But here's the thing. You know, in the movies where they pan to the crazy guy in the basement, the way that they signify the crazy guy in the basement is crazy is he has a bunch of religious tattoos. <laughs> Like, like they're, they're gonna have like this cinematic shot of him like chained. I don't know what movie I'm thinking of, but like, this is a concept of like a thing. I don't know, I think like Da Vinci Code or something. There's like a guy that's like chained up and he's got like Exodus like down his neck and like all the scriptures and stuff. And I'm just casually sitting here in my apartment like thinking like what like Bible verse I'm gonna get tattooed on me. Like even like not in a religious way, like, Clearly in a crazy guy type of way. <laughs> I don't know why I do that. Actually, I do know I do know why I do that. Um, okay, sorry, sorry to get all, you know, armchair psychologist on you guys. I found this out a while ago. I had this, I had this moment where I was really stressed, like two years ago. And I was like, I like, I I was like, oh my God. And I started like looking at like religious stuff and I didn't know why. And it really freaked me out because like I'm not religious anymore. I was raised very religious. I grew up in the church. I Here's the thing. I respect religion because it it gives people parameters, right? It, it gives you guys like a little book, like don't do this, do this. Do, it basically like is, is a guidebook for like how to be a good person. And some people are naturally good people, but some people are just not good people. So if you don't give them any parameter or any reason to be good, like, you know, oh my God, God's gonna smite you or like you're gonna go to heaven or hell, they'll just go buck wild. So like I fuck with religion in that sense because it's keeping everybody, a, a lot, a, a large mass of people like pretty sane. Some of you guys are just good old, good, good folks, you know? Some people are not. I think it helps. I think it's good. But I don't uh I don't follow, I don't subscribe to any religious stuff anymore. But do I? Anyways, so I was going through some stuff like a while back and uh yeah, I started like reading this religious stuff. And then later on I talked to my therapist and I was like, why did I do this? Like this is like so weird. I was like, I I told her, I was like, this is it. I'm losing it. This is the day. This is this is the time when the threads unwind and finally she becomes fully crazy. You know what I mean? I <laughs> Hair in my mouth. And she said, actually, that's pretty normal. I was like, what do you mean? She said, when we're going through really, really, really hard times, when we're extremely stressed out, when we feel a complete loss of control, we will generally go back to structures that were put in place for us that gave us safety and security from an early age. So in my case, it was religion. So like from when I was a child till I was 10, my family was very religious. It's like, oh, you're sad, go read Psalms again. You know, oh, this, whatever, you know, go do that. But you know, for some people, Maybe you grew up as a dancer and then you quit dancing for 10 years and then one day you go through a breakup and you like just want to start dancing again. And you're like, this is crazy. No, we go back to structures that we understand when we feel a complete loss of control. So if you're ever like going through it and then you start doing something weird, that might be why. Um, and then, you know what else is so weird about like, I don't know, like psych shit like that that we do? If she didn't tell me that, I probably would have had that pattern for a while. But it's like, once you know, you just like don't do that anymore. Like if I ever was like, I'm gonna pick up a Bible and start reading it, I'd be like, okay, wait a minute. Like, I was about to say, Erica, that's how you know I'm getting real here. My name's Erica. Erica, it's Erica Bozeman, okay? Some people don't know that. I don't care. <clears throat> that's how you know I'm getting real, because I was saying like, 
okay, Erica, what are we doing? You know, like if I were to start doing that, I'd be like, what are you stressed about? It's a great indicator, you know? Um, God, yeah, there's so much stuff. This is why I always say you should go to therapy because once you understand the patterns of something, you don't keep doing it because that's so corny, bro. It's so corny. Like our, our bad patterns, whatever they may be, bad patterns, addictions, stuff like that, we do it because we go into little peanut brain mode, like little little shark brain, and it just runs everything. And we're just we just keep doing the same thing, dating the same types of people, uh, falling into the same addictions, escalating certain patterns over and over and over again. But then when somebody like a therapist or maybe even like a good friend calls you out on that pattern and like you really believe it, and hold on, I'm not talking about that friend that like is like gives you advice, but is really mean about it. And then always hits you with the, I told you so, you know what I mean? Fuck that friend. I don't care how right you are. I don't care. I don't care. Like, you know, if, if you meant it with love, you didn't communicate it properly. So you didn't get the job done. You're fired. <laughs> I, I don't even have anybody in mind. I just know that there's people like that. Like they, they, they might give you really good advice, they don't deliver it in a loving way. And then when you don't follow the advice, they're like, oh, done. I told you. Like, da, 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 da. like, bro, you're clearly not as good at this job as you thought you were. You know what I mean? <sighs> what was I talking about? Anyways, we have these weird patterns. And then when there's like a person that can help you with that in a loving way, this is why I say go to a therapist. You don't do that stuff anymore because you're like, ugh. The, like you see it so clearly and you realize how dumb it, because a lot of these patterns, we formulate them when we're children. We make them up when we're like six or seven years old. And then when you realize that you're 28 doing what you would have done when you were seven, <laughs> it's like, it's a little embarrassing. It's a little embarrassing. You know, the other thing too, is when you start to like notice this stuff too, you'll start to notice when your parents are doing stuff, when they're like stuck in an old pattern or an old age that they never grew out of. And, and it's so weird to look at somebody that's 50 or 60 years old that's doing something that they started doing clearly when they were like 10, right? Well, that's the biggest motivator for like anybody to like want to work on themselves because being 50 and acting like a 10 year old and not knowing it that's embarrassing <sighs> that's super embarrassing uh let me think let me think about what else i got going on this week oh <laughs> dude okay i got something else i don't have a segue i'm just gonna change topics i went to new york this weekend I went to New York this weekend. Um, went for a couple reasons, but every night when I was done with work, I wanted to go to Broadway, which is hilarious because I don't like musicals. I'm the type of person where if I'm watching a movie and they break out into song, I'm like, yo, y'all got a minute and 30 seconds to get through this song before I turn the TV off or I start skipping ahead. I am not a musicals person. And I find that like people are either hard on or hard off a music person. If you didn't know, there's new movies, new movies that are coming out, the Willy Wonka movie and Mean Girls. These movies are actually musicals, but Hollywood isn't marketing them as musicals because they know people don't like, some people don't like musicals. So the people that like musicals, y'all be all up on this shit. Y'all love it. Y'all love it. But the people that don't like it, we viscerally dislike it. And I don't know why. Sure, that's a thing that I can like explore, do the little therapy thing and explore it with a professional and I'll come back to you. But regardless, let me get to the point. But wait, this is also messed up because those movies are musicals and they're not telling people because they're trying to get them into the theater. But if you don't like musicals, what's worse than paying 18 
1850. I live in LA, it's 1850 here. For a movie ticket, thinking you're gonna see Timothy Chalamet in the greatest role of his life, and then he starts singing. Oh, God. And then you're trapped in the theater. That's, is that part of the experience? Are we trying to make movies a 360 experience now? Like, they're like, how do we make it a, a, a heartwarming Christmas story, a musical, and a horror in real life? I would hate to be trapped in a theater not knowing it was a musical. And, and now that I know, I have a choice. And the choice is I will not be going. But I like Broadway now. So you see, I have a visceral reaction to the musicals. I don't know why. Somebody leave a comment why you don't like musicals. I don't know. Help me understand. We, we should be balancing ideas off of each other, right? That's healthy. I think that's good. To get a little direction. I started, I went to a Broadway show a couple months ago in May. And I went to Moulin Rouge because I love that movie, which kind of is a musical, It's it, the, the movie is kind of a musical, but I just, I loved the movie when I was a kid. The only musical I liked, right? So I was like, all right, I'll go to that Broadway show. Bro, that was so tight. I am a Broadway boy now. Like, hate musicals, fuck with Broadway heavy. And you know what I think part of it is? And maybe this, I'm, I think, I, my theory so far, it, it's, it, it doesn't have to be right. It's not, it's not right. It's just a theory, right? My theory so far is it like, were some of y'all in plays or you like saw Broadway or theater or something early and you had an appreciation for it? Because bro, the Broadway performers, those motherfuckers are another level of talented. Those people are some machines. Like you think actors are talented? Yes, actors are talented. But Broadway performers are like if actors were NFL players and they were up six days a week, training, dancing, practicing, going. The lady I saw the other day, she was 59 doing the lead in Chicago. And this bitch was, da -da 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 -da. she was like climbing up a ladder. She was like shaking her titties. Like she was, she was going off. Bro, I came here to film the podcast today holding that box and went up two flights of stairs and I immediately had to sit down. Like these people are on another level. They sing really well. Also, they're clearly very passionate about what they do and they're so proud to be on that stage. And I find that to be incredibly inspiring. A good performer, a passionate performer is, is, is inspiring, but people that are performing soldiers, I'm like, dude, you guys know this. Let me break this down for you. The Broadway people, and I know I'm getting loud right now, but that's how you know like my heart's in it right now. I will fight for the Broadway people, but they don't need me to fight for them because they will beat some ass. Those people, those, they are wild. I saw Moulin Rouge, insane. I saw Chicago, nuts. I saw Wicked. Wicked blew my mind. The stage visuals, the everything. Dude, these people are practicing and rehearsing for months on end. They sing live every night. There's a live orchestra. I mean, this is a classical form of entertainment that has been refined over the years, and these roles are extremely coveted. The plays are so timeless. And then the other thing that's fascinating is that afterwards, they rotate the cast. So you get to see different types of people play the same role. Here's a great example. Hold on one second. Uh, what is her name? I know we're almost done, Jesse. Uh, yes, dude. Okay. Here's a great example. Colleen Ballinger, a YouTuber, she got like canceled a while back and she busted out her ukulele and was like, let me go back to the platform, you know, all that stuff. Um, Colleen was always a really big Broadway fan and she wanted to do plays and musicals. And finally, she got a large enough platform that she was offered a lead role in Waitress on Broadway. I, and I just found this out a couple days ago because now that I understand the theater, I, I just, I need more, Okay. And I remembered that Colleen wanted to be on Broadway. So now that I've seen these like superstar performers, I had to know what her performance was like. So like the way it works is if she can sell tickets, she's going to get a whole bunch of money. 
Um, and I don't know, whatever. They want her to sell tickets. So Colleen finally gets her dream, right? This huge, 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 like, Broadway performance, a couple-week deal, a couple months, whatever. Um, she does it. And they expect, because she has a massive following, that she's going to sell a lot of tickets. I didn't know how her ticket sales went. But I saw the performance. I saw her do Waitress. There's a video of it up on YouTube. If you've been to Broadway... It was bad. It was not good. It was not it was not to the level that these performers are. It just wasn't. Like they let her on stage and I'm not even saying that because like everybody hates Colleen right now. Watch the performance. It's not good. Um and this is also funny because her character Miranda Sings was based off of criticizing people in the Broadway or the play world uh that's what the character's based off of, like making fun of people that think they're going to be a star. She wasn't that good. Now, after Colleen went on Broadway, she got followed up by Kamiko Glenn. She was in Orange is the New Black. She, she's like super cute, has a beautiful voice. Kamiko Glenn's performance of the same exact song or same exact like character from Waitress and the same songs is also on YouTube. Bro, if you want to see something funny, watch Colleen, like, watch Colleen sing that song. I think it's called When He Sees Me. Watch Colleen sing that song. And then watch Kamiko come on stage and blow it out of the water. Kamiko said, puh, 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 move, bitch. Like, it was unbelievable. Like, I, and, and this is coming from somebody that doesn't want to be trapped in the theater with Timothy Chalamet singing. Like, I am... I am opinionated on this. I am passionate about this. That's her name, right? It's Kamiko Glenn. Kamiko Glenn. Dude, she barreled through that role. She said, you don't deserve to be here. I mean, obviously, she didn't really say that. But it's like, you know when people say like, oh, I don't want to like follow up that act or anything. Like, Colleen went first and she really thought like, this is my moment. And then Kamiko took a that shit on her head, bro. Steaming pile. And she said, <laughs> next. Um, I just think that's really interesting. And I'm excited to go to more Broadway shows. I will not be seeing Mean Girls. I will not be seeing... I will not be seeing Willy Wonka. I also won't be seeing Willy Wonka in protest. Guys, I'm almost out of time, but I need to finish this thought. <sighs> Wait. Why am I blanking on her name right now? I know her name because I'm about to start yelling, but. Kate McKinnon from Saturday Night Live, also Weird Barbie in the Barbie movie, she wanted so badly to play Willy Wonka in the new Wonka film. She really wanted that role. Like, that was her dream role of a lifetime. And she fought so hard for it. And Timothy, who, by the way, I like Timothy because, dude, the last couple of, like, SNL, like, sketches they did, crazy. The t they, those were, they were good. They were good. I can't even lie. But I love Kate. I especially loved Kate after her weird Barbie portrayal in the movie. It was so, so good. I just wanted to see her. I just wanted to see her play Willy Wonka. Dude, would she, think about weird Barbie. Would she not make the best Willy Wonka? She was robbed. And I will not be watching. Thank you.